Significant TV, Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Janet Fiore, CEO of the Sierra Group, Disability and Employment Leaders. Janet, welcome to Significant TV. Hi, Fran. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. You know, it's very exciting because you and I met several years ago and I was sort of the young entrepreneur <laughs> starting out in the Philadelphia area and I felt so privileged to be part of a group that was doing visioning about how our businesses as women business owners could grow and who would have thought years <laughs> later moves later that we'd be sitting here on the studio it's pretty yeah. cool isn't yeah, it? Yeah it's pretty cool Thank you. Well, you and I share a history, but our viewers may really not know about you. So I'd love for you to kind of take us back. What was that significant moment that had you say, you know what, I'm going to be an entrepreneur? That's a great question, Fran. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, as you know, some leaders are born women. Right? And I like to say... <laughs> Wait, let's freeze frame on that. <laughs> that is a great statement. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and it's a statement that was engraved for me by mm -hmm. my team several mm -hmm. years ago. So it means a lot to yes, me. Yes. But I think I was also born an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. My grandparents immigrated here from Romania, and my grandfather started a truck dealership and sold big semi-trucks. Mm -hmm. So he was a phenomenal entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and it kind of skipped a generation, but both my brother and I became entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So even as a child, at the age of 12, in the summer, I felt like we should be doing something with mm. our time. So I was the one that coordinated the neighborhood carnival for muscular dystrophy. Wow. I got all the kids involved. I convinced one of the neighbors that she had the best yard. And it would be no trouble <laughs> at all if we just got together and did something significant and meaningful to help people. Mm. Because all we were doing was playing and riding bikes. Right. So wow. from organizing that event and seeing how you could bring people together for a cause, I think I knew right then that mm -hmm. I had to be an agent for change. Definitely. <laughs> agent for change. Some leaders are born with it. I love that. I absolutely love that. I thought you would. Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of schooling and career, how did you move to forming the Sierra Group? Well, it's a story that seems like it doesn't have a logical thread, but I realize Sierra Group is where I belong. It's where Excellent. I was born to be. Mm -hmm. I thought I would be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So I started out by getting a liberal studies degree, and I was a paralegal for a while, mm -hmm. where I quickly learned that I loved the practice of law, but not for me. Mm -hmm. I went on to be an insurance adjuster, a liability adjuster for commercial claims, where I learned everything you needed to know about how not to be in trouble in business. Very valuable. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also had the chance back then to deal with catastrophic loss claims. Mm. And it was my job as an adjuster to try to mitigate through money and technology help someone get their life back to some degree of independence after an injury that maybe caused something like uh, quadriplegia. Right. Wow. And that was when I said, aha, I can do something with this. I'm mm -hmm. not where I belong. I didn't belong in law school mm -hmm. and I didn't belong in insurance for my whole life. Mm -hmm. So it was at that moment that I realized with technology and speech recognition 25 years ago, it was not like it is today. No, you like, were ahead of the curve. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody wow. takes autocorrect for granted on their cell phones. Yes. That was specialized software costing $500 back in the day. Right. Speech recognition was $10,000 when I got into the industry. And now we all talk to we talk to whatever we want to have respond. Right? right, right. You walk into the restroom and you go like this, expecting the water to come. <laughs> right, right. Wow. Yeah. I mean, a very interesting path, and yet one where you were really listening to your heart and the environment. Yes. Um, catastrophic claims right. and helping people put their life back together. Yeah. Tell me more specifically about what your group does. Well, Sierra Group is a family of services, 25 mm -hmm. years old now. We started with just the device that would help you if you were quadriplegic and couldn't use your hands to type, 
you can speak. Mm -hmm. If you're a person who's blind and you can't see the computer, we would help you get technology to be able to use your computer and mm -hmm. a phone and go to work. Mm -hmm. Out of that, one of my greatest accomplishments in life is the Sierra Group Academy, mm -hmm. located in Center City, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. That's where we're able to bring hundreds of people each year together adults with disabilities mm -hmm. and recently kids as young as 14 wow. can come to us for services mm -hmm. to figure out if they can have a career to get the skills the business skills and the accommodation so that everybody can have the power of a paycheck the power of a paycheck and career career having a career gives you confidence absolutely it, it allows you to share your talents and not be limited by what people may perceive as disabilities. That's right. So how do you do that now in the academy? What does that look like? You shared the age ranges. Right. But, but what right. does that look like? People that, are look, people that have a disability can apply for services and we help mm -hmm. them identify the various funding sources okay. that would pay for their schooling. It's typically funded through the government, mm -hmm. sometimes through insurances like long-term disability. Mm -hmm. And they come to us because disability has kept them from work. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, Bram, but people with disabilities are the largest group of unemployed Americans. Mm -hmm. At our program, 73% of our graduates get jobs. And their jobs are $12 an hour and above. So they're earning a livable wage. These are mm. typically people that don't have a college degree, where mm. disability has been in their life, where it came into their life, and they're looking for a job in an office. Mm -hmm. Customer service work, call center work, mm -hmm. paralegal, mm -hmm. insurance, sales. People come to us wow. because they can't get their foot in the door at mm -hmm. work. We round out their skills. We've got over 75 regional business partners that hire from us and we typically start with an internship and then we get people oh, out there and wonderful. you know an internship's not just for children right or right. teenagers right if you've been right. out of work for a while we get you out there we get the skills that the businesses are looking to hire and then help people with their confidence people come in the doors at the academy and the first thing they say is they feel the love and the energy mm, they feel themselves yeah. feeling like they can actually get up and do right. it and that possibility yeah uh, that leads to courage yeah wow yeah it does and then at the academy because we're training mm -hmm. we train companies too okay There's, tell me more about that there's a new 7% hiring goal for any company that does business for the federal government. If you're mm -hmm. a federal government contractor selling goods and services to mm -hmm. the government, there's a new mandate. It's affirmative action. Mm -hmm. Just like hiring people of color, hiring mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. any minority. They have set a goal that 7% of every workforce should be a person with a disability. Now, I'm really excited by this. Oh, sure. Because 12 wow. years ago, with some folks in Washington. I remember. You remember? I do remember. Yes. We pounded the pavement Absolutely. in Washington, D.C., over 300 meetings on the Hill, talking to wow. legislators about the value of people with disabilities getting educated to go to work. And the way to make jobs open is to entice the government contractors to hire. Mm -hmm. sure. We were looking at it as a kind of as a bonus mm -hmm. that you would get a preference on a contract mm -hmm. and in over 300 meetings it didn't come out as a bonus it came out as a mandate that you're mm -hmm. in trouble if you don't. Okay. Not the way an entrepreneur would look at it right. yet a wonderful outcome because people with disabilities are statistically great workers. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. show up they don't transition away they, they make wonderful employees mm -hmm. So business is following a mandate to hire and recruit more, which means more and more people are getting jobs. Mm -hmm. And then they're going, oh, my goodness, what a great pool of workers. Right. Why didn't I right. do this wow. sooner? Wow. And you know the advances in technology yeah. have made the right. things that were hard back when I got started. It's really easy to implement the technology now. Right. Yeah, and so that's from, sort of where you started. Yeah. yeah. So we're wow. out there with companies. We have a job board, Recruit mm -hmm. Disability, where okay. national companies post their openings with us. And guess what? All the applicants are people with disabilities. We help recruiters mm. get certified on how do I recruit and help a person okay. with a disability come okay. to work. There's still a lot of confusion mm -hmm. around really how easy it is. Right, right. But it's not easy if you don't know. 
So we take the knowledge and we give people skills. So one of the things that organizations recognize is the ADA, so mm -hmm. Accommodation Disabilities right. Act. How does that work in conjunction with what you do? Well, it was the catalyst for the start of my business, mm -hmm. in all honesty. Mm -hmm. Back in 1992, when we got started, the Rehabilitation Act had just been reauthorized, mm -hmm. stating that a person with a severe disability had to be deemed employable, not unemployable. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you had to creatively help them. That was mm -hmm. a big mandate. But two mm -hmm. years before that, the ADA became law, mm -hmm. where business was now not permitted to discriminate. Right. So basically, business can't go, sorry, disability, I don't see how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. They have to try. And they have to engage in what the ADA calls the interactive process. Mm -hmm. You and I would just call it a conversation about right, how things right. work. <laughs> it's like, hey, how's she going to do that? And we come together and we say, well, there are a few options. Right, Let's right. work out the best workaround. Mm -hmm. And voila, you've got a reasonable accommodation mm -hmm. under the Americans with mm -hmm. Disabilities Act. Given what you're doing and mm -hmm. the progress that you made, it's almost like the overnight sensation after 12 <laughs> years of work, but given the progress, what do you see in the future for your company and then sort of for the people that you're serving? There are so many exciting possibilities. Mm -hmm. Recently, the, um, the uh, political convention yes. was in Philadelphia, and I got to participate and take part of it, but it was the first large convention that had volunteers with disabilities actively sought to mm -hmm. be a part of things. Mm -hmm. Whether disability is not a partisan issue, mm -hmm. both sides of the aisle realize people going to work and earning money are helping the economy That's right. and they're That's helping right. one another. Right. So with the legislation like the 7% rule under the U.S. Department of Labor, Office of Federal Contract Compliance, that's a huge driver. Companies can't sit back and go, I'm just going to not worry about this. They're being mandated to do outreach and track that they're recruiting mm. people with disabilities. Okay. To me, that was the perfect opening mm -hmm. because once they're recruiting, you're going to find great talent. Right. At Sierra right. Group Academy, most of the people that graduate are going to work. We have repeat hires from companies that come there looking for talent. They're coming back because they're saying things like, there's some of the nicest, hardest working right. people. They've right. got work ethic, they've got communication skills, and they're good at their jobs. And the technology is easy. enthusiasm <laughs> is infectious. Um, Thank you. I can see why there were 300 meetings on the hill, <laughs> because Janet obviously was not going to take a no. Exactly. Because um, it wasn't going home The door are. is shut. That's okay. We're coming <laughs> back. Where can people find out more about Sierra Academy, uh, the Sierra Group? Um, the Sierra Group is located in Center City, Philadelphia now. We mm -hmm. have a field team that serves 22 counties in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Our corporate services are national, mm -hmm. but if people want to get to know us, twice a month we have an open house on Friday, every other okay. Friday. Okay. So just call us and visit us, the Sierra Group Academy org, the Sierra Group Foundation, or the Sierra Group com. They're all going to link you to okay. the Sierra Group Family of Services. Okay. If you come in for an open house, we will help you find exactly what you need so that you can have the power of a paycheck or you can hire more people with disabilities. The power of the paycheck. <laughs> and of course, the one I love some leaders are born women. Some of us really are <laughs> just born women. <laughs> thank you, Fran. Wow, Janet, thank you so much. Continue to do the significant work that you're doing. 7%. We, everyone needs to be involved. It's really powerful. It is. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, significant leaders like Janet Fiore, CEO of the Sierra Group. Continue to follow us on YouTube, and I want to say thank you to Radnor Studio 21 for hosting Significant TV. I'm Fran McNeil, and you are significant.